इट इज अ बिग बिग डे फॉर भारत इट्स अ बिग बिग विन फॉर भारत फॉर अब्दुल रहमान मक्की द ट्रेजरर ऑफ द लश्कर तयबा द डेप्यूटी चीफ ऑफ द जमात दावा द राइट हैंड मैन ऑफ हाफिज सईद एंड अ प्लॉटर ऑफ द ट्वेंटी सिक्स इलेवन मुंबई अटैक्स टू बी डेजिग्नेटेड अ ग्लोबल टेररिस्ट बाय द यू एन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल चाइना नॉट ब्रिंगिंग इन वेइंग इन दिस टाइम अराउंड होल्डिंग बैक and paving the way for makki to be designated a terrorist joining us now is the former permanent representative of india to the united nations and currently the dean of the kautilya school for public policy shri sayed akbaruddin akbaruddin ji namaste jai hind what a big day it is today how significant is this uh, development uh, anand it's uh, great to be with you today on a day when indian diplomacy has scored uh, it scored because um, terrorism is one of the major planks of indian foreign policy because it impacts on our ordinary indians in such egregious ways so uh, designating of a designation of a terrorist is always a occasion of success and i'm glad to join you today on this occasion how uh, can you take us through the journey because you've been through this process so what has changed and what no, not too many people are talking about is china holding back How did that happen, Akbaruddin ji? It's a big, big development. Uh, so you're right, Anand. The, uh, when we started counterterrorism as a foreign policy plank, it was not widely accepted. Um, you know, it took us ten years of efforts to get Masood Azhar designated at the UN uh, by the Sanctions Committee. This time, it's taken less than ten months. So you can see that the pace of our counterterrorism activities. has uh, speeded up very much now uh, you mentioned about china china has unfortunately been the godfather of all terrorists when they are to be sanctioned in the committee they tried uh, with masood azhar repeatedly they also blocked or put on hold uh, the present de- designation of makki uh, however 6 uh, months uh, uh, while india was on the security council we pushed hard Uh, uh and it made perhaps china realize that uh, they are isolated china is one of those states which doesn't like to to be isolated so i presume they had a rethink of it and they backed off realizing that this doesn't pay uh, uh any dividends for them uh, because terrorism is now uh, countering terrorism is now increasingly becoming a global norm and china wouldn't want to be seen as standing in the way um, perhaps it's a rare uh, late realization but it's a realization for the good of all somewhere if you look at it china also looks at what serves its purpose so akbaruddin ji would you want to also read between the lines is it a tacit message to pakistanis and to the isi establishment and the jihadi tanzims that don't train etim cadre don't encourage them because we will hang you out to dry uh Uh, every pushback against uh, terrorism uh, and um, uh, de- uh, successful designation is a clear message uh, china is realizing this very quickly they delayed something for 10 years now for less than 10 months hopefully next time it will be on schedule so yes it's a message it's a message on multiple um, uh, in multiple areas it's a message that china doesn't like to be isolated it's also a message that china is not willing to continuously stand up for pakistan uh, in global fora it's a message that china is realizing that it serves nobody's interest to uh, try and delay the inevitable so uh, it's there are multiple messages in this it's for pakistan to take those messages and to um, reorient itself um, uh, and its relations with us is the onus now on bharat to prove that makki is on pak soil because that will immediately bring the fatf sanctions back into the back into contention that makki is on pakistani soil is uh, not an issue of contention he was actually even put under so called house arrest uh, uh, by the pakistanis where he actually fathered a child hmm. so uh, i don't think that's an issue uh, the important thing for us is to continue this uh, pursuit today it's makki tomorrow hopefully it will be abdul rauf azgar yeah. day after tomorrow hopefully it will be sajid meer mm. there is a endless pipeline that pakistan has created 
Oh. We need to go after them, hmm. one after the other. Hmm. But uh, Mr. Akburuddin, the other aspect is they have been designated terrorists, but what next? How do we account for them? They have bounties on their heads, but they are still flourishing. At 75, Makki is still uh, ruling the roost. He's giving those sermons, he's inciting, he's recruiting. So, it's business as usual for these Tanzims and these terrorists. Um, well, um, uh, it, it may seem so. Hmm. However, uh, let's look uh, and wait for the outcome of this effort because uh, we've now been able to link uh, global financing with counterterrorism. And that's a very potent mix because uh, uh, Pakistan just got off the grey list just now. And one of its key messages was that we no longer uh, help in financing terrorists. Hmm. Uh, with this sanction, now they ha also have to put financial sanctions on Maki. Hmm. Uh, if they don't do so, uh, Pakistan, which is in dire economic straits, will have challenges of a different nature, of a financial nature. Hmm. So it's the financial squeeze working with the political arm that will perhaps uh, yield better results now than in the past. Hmm. I'm just broad basing a little now, uh, Akbaruddin ji. Uh, India, Pakistan, current scenario, Pakistan uh, cornered from all sides, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, financial doldrums, epicenter of terror, people in distress, civil war-like situations, two provinces on the verge of balkanization, and then Shahbaz Sharif suddenly softens his tune, and but they still can't drop this Kashmir rhetoric. Um, yes, but rhetoric is that much. And we don't need to look too much at Pakistan. It is yesterday's problem. We have uh, better uh, goals to fulfill. Uh, we shouldn't focus too much on Pakistan. Yes, we need to continue to put pressure. We need not um, um, uh, uh, respond to their um, uh, assiduous request towards us. But our focus is on the globe now. We are now the G20 president. We need to engage the North and the South. We need to uh, be the bridge builder between East and the West. Um, 2023 is India's breakthrough here. So let's focus on bigger issues. Uh, hopefully, Pakistan and China realize that uh, yesterday's weapons are no longer in and uh, stop using them. Otherwise, we have other ways of handling them. And that need not be said, what are the other ways? Between 2016, and 2022, has India engineered a very, very uh, significant and dynamic shift in its strategic posture, geopolitically, diplomatically? Diplomatically, yes. Uh, we certainly today are not the India of the past. Uh, we have been able to, uh, both on account of a strong leadership and on account of our uh, economic uh, prowess, uh, our uh, big player on the global scene compared to what we were some years ago. Uh, it's our time now. The world is watching us. Uh, we need to uh, move to the next level. And the next level means not only looking at our interests, but trying to uh, put in place uh, global um, uh, um, norms which help us and which are based on everybody contributing. And that's the big change. A middle power usually can pursue its interests, hmm. but a big power is one which not only pursues its interests, but marries its interests with global interests. Hmm. And that's what India is looking at in 2023. A top journalist in Pakistan and a top uh, newspaper has carried it on their front pages broadsheet, uh, where he's saying, look what uh, China and India have become and where Pakistan is. They have credited Prime Minister Narendra Modi, they have credited India that it's able to say and do what it wants up to a certain level, bordering on arrogance today. They've quoted that we continue to import oil from Russia, we continue to uh, be a bridge for their oil exports to other nations, and we're doing it uh, with uh, aplomb and with some gumption. Is this uh, an understanding of the world? And if your enemy realizes that you're strong, is that a larger message there, Akbaruddin ji? Um, uh, Anand, um, it's better late than never for Pakistan that it realizes that India has moved by leaps and bounds. It's moved to the next level. If Pakistan wants to um, benefit from India, uh, there are other ways of doing it. But its policy is today lying in shambles. 
It's a country in economic uh, strife. Uh, it is politically unstable. Um, but be that as it may, it's, uh, it's a neighbor. Uh, they will handle them themselves. Let's focus on the future. Pakistan is India's yesterday's problem. Uh, we need to focus on the future. And by all accounts, including by those in the Pakistani press, our future seems to be much better with a committed leadership un under Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi ji and an economy which is uh, booming. The young are taking opportunities. This is our time. We need to capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. And 2023 uh, will hopefully be India's breakthrough year in terms of diplomacy. Well, uh, we are looking forward to that. Final question, strategic autonomy. Uh, is this going to come at a huge diplomatic cost for us? Or are we managing ourselves ably? Because we are holding a mirror to the West. We are holding a mirror to Europe. We are, we are holding a mirror to nations which in the past have thought that they can get away with bullying us diplomatically. True. The India of the uh, second or the third decade of the 21st century is a different kettle of fish. Um, it's pretty clear that uh, we've been able to navigate the shoals of geopolitical uh, differences. Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, done this uh, purely by holding our nerve. Uh, in situations of crisis, those countries which hold their nerve, those countries who have a strong leadership, willing to take risks, uh, do succeed. The others fall back. And that's what we are saying. I don't see that there is a diplomatic price to pay because the trajectory of our ties with the West continues to grow. Hmm. Even as we consolidate our ties with Russia, uh, we have not um, abandoned our ties with the West. They are an important source of um, uh, investment to us, of best practice to us, and we continue to engage with them at hmm. our, uh, in a way that we choose to do so. Hmm. Uh, and let's be clear, that the India of the present-day present, present day India or the new India uh, is ready to take on more responsibilities, but also in a very calibrated manner, engages with all across the globe because our interests are varied. It's no longer one limited interest. We have interests with the West as well as the East. How, how much would you credit Prime Minister Narendra Modi for this shift over the last eight years? Well, obviously, the Prime Minister thinks big. He has made us all think big. Um, I remember from the days when I first engaged with him, uh, when he became Prime Minister, he always used to urge us to start thinking big. Uh, countries like ours need to think big, uh, to uh, uh, think boldly, and not. Uh, there is always a small little risk when you do these things, but it's important uh, that we uh, act like a billion plus country hmm. and a country uh, which is committed to the welfare of its people hmm. and global good too. Akbaruddin ji, always a pleasure to speak with you. We should do this more often. Thank you very, very much for making the time. Thank you very much, Anand. We're going to take a very, very short break on that note. Stay with us here on CNN News 18.